In this tutorial, I'll show you how to download street networks from OpenStreetMap and import them into City Engine. Once we have the street networks in City Engine, we'll apply CGA rules to create detailed street models. As covered in the Finding Data tutorial, there are multiple places where you can obtain street GIS data, either from a city's GIS portal or by using one of the international databases like OpenStreetMap. Using your browser, navigate to OpenStreetMap.org and search for your area of interest. Here we will search for Redlands, California. From the results, I'll choose a second option, which will take us to Redlands City Boundary. I'll zoom in a little to get closer to the extent of our project area. Once I'm happy, I'll choose Export and then refine the selection manually. Once I've finished adjusting the area, I'll click on the blue export button in the left-hand panel. This will download a file called map.osm. Now let's move this file from the downloads folder to our Redlands project folder. To do this, click on the small arrow to the right of the downloaded file and choose to show in folder. Right click the map.osm file and choose rename. Let's call this Redlands Streets. Right click again and choose to copy and then navigate to your project folder and right click and choose to paste. Now let's go back into City Engine, import the street network data and apply a CGA rule to generate a detailed 3D street model. We've already placed an OSM file here in the data folder of our Redlands project. Now to import, all we need to do is drag the file into the active viewport. The OSM import window will let you select from all the different data layers in the data package. The importer will automatically select the highway layer which will contain your streets. Select the sublayer drop down arrow to the left of the highway layer and uncheck cycleways, footpaths, paths, pedestrian, service and track layers. This will ensure that the small walking paths don't disrupt the import of the street layers. These pedestrian paths can always be brought in separately by importing the OSM file again and creating some new layers. There are also settings here when importing street graph networks that let you include OSM attribute tags, generate bridges based on overlapping street segments, simplify graph curves and clean up the nodes. We'll uncheck the Generate Bridges tool and click Next. It will then ask for an angle threshold to simplify the street graph. Set this at 10 degrees. This is a simplify graph tool and it will take individual segments that have an angle of less than 10 degrees and simplify the angle. It will then prompt you for settings relating to graph cleanup. Check the merge nodes box and change both the horizontal and vertical merge distances to five meters. Click finish and City Engine will import your new graph layer. Now let's rename the new graph layer to OSM streets. To do this, let's open the Inspector window. So go to Window, choose Inspector, and then in the Layer tab next to Name, type in OSM Streets. Once the streets are imported, we'll need to align them to the terrain. To do this, in the Scene window, right-click Streets and select Align Graph to Terrain. In the Align Graph to Terrain dialog box, in the drop down menu for height map, choose Terrain DEM and leave the Align function to project all, and then click Finish. Next, we'll trim the street network to match the terrain. From the camera menu, choose Side from the drop down list. This gives us a profile view where we can clearly see the overhanging nodes and segments. With the selection tool active, Draw a marquee around the overhanging nodes of the street network. Note where I drag from right to left, the dotted marquee will select everything that it touches. But if I drag from left to right, the marquee will only select what falls completely within the blue box. When you're finished making your selection, press delete. Next, we'll adjust some view settings 
so we can see the models more clearly. So under the view settings, I'll choose to turn off the wireframes. And next, let's adjust the scene light. Select the scene layer in the scene window, and then in the inspector window, adjust the solar intensity to one. Once the graph network is trimmed to the terrain, go back to the camera menu and choose perspective from the drop down list. The import will never be perfect, but you can always re import the OSM file and adjust the settings. A quick way to adjust the width settings within the entire layer is to select it in the scene window and then alter the street width by street class settings in the inspector. Each of the current street segment widths are based on class. So let's change the settings to the one you can see here. Once the settings are complete, right-click the layer and choose to reset seed from the context menu. As I mentioned earlier, when you import streets, it's not always going to be perfect. So let's look at some ways we can fix any errors we find. One way is to use the selection tool to just select a node of a street you'd like to delete. So here if I drag from left to right, select the node and press delete on the keyboard, I can delete this street. Another way to edit streets is to use the Edit Streets Curve tool. When the tool is activated, handles are displayed for selected streets or nodes. There are two types of handles. There are the curve handles and the street width handles. When a single node is selected, only the curve handle is shown. And when a single street is selected, a combined curve and street width handle is displayed. The green handles drive the start and end direction of the street and the yellow circle allows you to move the nodes. Sometimes it's necessary to re-sketch a whole street. So here I'm going to delete this existing street by deleting the nodes and then I'll grab the Polygon Street Creation tool to sketch out a new street. Notice that the tool snaps directly to the existing nodes of the streets that we have already. In addition to using the street width handle on the Edit Streets Curve tool, we can also adjust the street width in the street parameters. So here I'll just type in 10, I'll select the other street segment, and under the street parameters, I'll change the street width to 10 as well. To clean up the roundabouts on the nodes at the end of the street segments, choose the Select tool and select a node. Right click and choose select all objects of the same type from the context menu and in the inspector change the node type from smart to crossing. And when you're finished click anywhere in the viewport to deselect the selected features. An alternative to the OpenStreetMap data source would be one from a local city database. And when formatting existing street center lines for use within City Engine, we recommend using the 3D City Information Model. More information and training on the 3D CIM can be found by going to our training services. The latest version of the 3D Cities template is available on GitHub, and it's also available on ArcGIS Online. To find the 3D City template, go to www.artgis.com and click Gallery. And then in the search box, type in 3D City Template and press the search icon. Make sure you check on Show ArcGIS Desktop Content. And then the fourth option down is a 3D Cities Template. For this project, we've already created a 3D CIM database to import into City Engine. The database is located in the data folder of the City Engine Essential Skills project. In the navigator window, expand the folder by clicking on the arrow to the left and then expand the data folder. 
Near the top you see the 3D CIM Redlands Geodatabase. Just drag and drop it into the viewport. The Geodatabase Import Wizard appears. Uncheck the Select Deselect All box and check the box next to the Transport Network segment. You will see that City Engine automatically recognises the type as a polyline. Also check the Run Simplify Graph tool after import and click Next. Let's set the threshold angle at 10 and click Next. Make sure the merge nodes and resolve conflicting shape boxes are checked and that the horizontal and vertical merge distances are set to 5 metres. Then click Finish. Once the streets are imported, you'll notice that they sit below the terrain. To see this, turn off the OSM streets by clicking on the eye to the left of the layer. Right click on the Transport Network segment and select Align Graph to Terrain. In the Align Graph to Terrain dialog box, make sure Project All is selected as the Align function and Terrain DEM as a height map and click Finish. You might still see some terrain showing through the street shapes generated off our segments. To remedy this, right click the Transport Network segment and choose Select, Select Objects in the same layer and then choose to align terrain to shapes. Make sure Terrain DEM is set as a terrain and click Apply and then click Close to dismiss the Align to Shapes dialog box. Now your streets will be positioned nicely on top of the terrain. Now let's zoom in a little closer to see some problems that will need some manual editing. First let's change these nodes that have turned into roundabouts at the end of the street segment. Select a node at the end of the street and right click and choose select all objects of the same type and then in the inspector change the node type from smart to crossing. Now let's look at an area where we need to manually edit some streets and redraw them. Choose the select tool from the toolbar and draw a selection rectangle. I'll draw one from right to left. This means that all elements which are enclosed and touched by the selection area will be selected. Once selected, press delete on your keyboard to delete the graph network segments. Select the street polygon creation tool and sketch out a new transport network segment. If you notice any red lines on the street network, these indicate conflicting shapes and we can resolve it by using the cleanup graph tool. With the selection tool active, select the area where you see the red line and right click and choose to clean up graph. In the clean up graph dialog box, change the horizontal and vertical merge distance to five and press finish and this should resolve the conflicting shape error. Now let's apply a CGA rule. Right click the transport network segment and choose to select all objects in the same layer. Now in the navigator window, collapse the data folder and navigate to the rules folder in the City Engine Essential Skills Training Project. Expand the rules folder and select the Essential Street CGA rule and then drag and drop it onto the selected street network. As the models generate, there's a progress bar on the bottom of the screen. When the whole bar is green, the models are finished generating. This essential streets rule is going to perform a set of operations for texturing and modeling of streets based on the initial shapes that we have created. Once the streets are generated, let's go over to the inspector and look at the different parameters that come with this rule. Click on the Shapes tab if it's not already active. And if I scroll down here, you can see there's a whole range of parameters we can adjust. You can either set the initial lane width or median width, for example, ahead of time in the attributes of the street data set before you apply the rule. Or you can also edit these parameters with the rule. For example, I can zoom to Brookside Avenue and select a street segment here. And in the rule parameters, I can add right and left bike lanes and adjust the bike lane width. 
Notice as I make my bike lanes wider, it takes away from the lane width because we are modeling within the parameters of that total street width. Now I'll zoom into State Street. And I know this street is a one-way street, but I can confirm by turning off the street network and looking at the aerial. And here I can see that it is a one-way street and there's in fact angled parking on both sides of the street as well. And these are two things that I can model using the CGA rule parameters. So I'll select some street segments and in the inspector window, I'll change lane distribution to zero, which will make it a one-way street. And then under parking layout, for the left and right hand sides, I'll change it to angled parking nose in. And then if I scroll down a little bit, under the population heading, I'll add a number here into vehicles per kilometre to add some more cars to the scene. Now we've seen how you can import terrains in City Engine to give your project a context and how you can generate street models from importing street data either from OSM or from a file geodatabase. Remember when you're importing street networks, always apply some cleanup rules. No matter where your data comes from, there's always likely to be some kind of manual editing involved as well. In our next video tutorial, We'll continue building our city model by importing building footprints and generating some detailed building structures.